Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we'll show you how to upgrade the optical drive in an early 2009 24-inch iMac. We've already gathered our materials, have shut down and unplugged the iMac, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to remove the memory cover. Simply loosen the Phillips screw holding the cover in, then remove the cover itself. Next, attach the two suction cups to the upper corners of the front glass, then pull the glass away from the frame. You can now lay the iMac down and remove the 12 Torx T8 screws that hold the front puzzle in place. Start with the two longest screws in the bottom center. Then the four mid-sized screws in the bottom corner and along the right edge. Finally, remove the six remaining screws, which will be the shortest. Once all the screws have been removed, being careful not to pull on the microphone cable underneath, lift up on the top edge of the bezel, then unhook the bottom edge from the iMac. Unwrap any tape that may be covering the microphone cable connector. Then disconnect the cable by gently pulling the connectors apart. You can then set the front bezel aside. Next, we need to detach the LVDS connector located near the bottom right of the iMac. It's held in place with two Torx T6 screws. Remove these screws. Then pull up on the black tab to detach it from the socket. Next, we need to remove the eight Torx T8 screws holding the LCD in place. Once you've done that, gently lift up the bottom edge of the screen. Underneath, towards the center of the iMac, disconnect the temperature sensor cable. You can then lift the display up further. On the left side of the LCD, peel back the plastic tape covering the inverter cable connector. Then, detach the connector by gently pulling it out of its socket. You can now lift the LCD out of the iMac and set it aside. Follow the optical drive temperature sensor cable from the drive to its connection on the logic board, loosening any tape along the way. Then, slide the connector out of its socket and move it out of the way. Next, peel the cloth tape away from the front of the drive and its carrier. Finally, remove these two Torx T10 screws. You should now be able to lift the front edge of the drive carrier out of the iMac and move it over enough that you can detach the SATA cable. The tolerances in this area are a little tight, so it may prove to be a little tricky if you have thicker fingers. Once the SATA cable is detached, you can remove the drive assembly completely. We'll need to remove the heat sensor, which is located on the rear of the drive assembly. Before removing the sensor, we need to remove the small EM pad near the corner of the drive. Carefully peel off the foam pad covering the sensor. Then, remove the sensor retainer. You may need to use a nylon tool to loosen the adhesive holding the retainer to the drive. You should then be able to simply lift the sensor away as well. 
Next, we can detach the four Torx T10 screws holding the drive to the carrier. The first two are easily accessible from the bottom. The other two are easiest to access with the top facing up. Once those screws are removed, you should be able to gently lift the drive up slightly from the rear and slide it out of the carrier. In order to install most new drives, you'll need to remove these two pins from the inner front edge of the carrier. Simply use a utility knife to cut them smoothly away. You can now install non-Apple drives without any fit problems. Depending on the model, your new optical drive may or may not come with a front bezel attached. If your drive didn't come with a bezel, you can skip ahead to the next section. If your drive did come with a bezel, we'll need to remove it first before proceeding. The bezel is held in by a series of tabs which can be unlatched with a small screwdriver or nylon tool. Two on the top, one on the side, and two on the bottom. Once these have been detached, you can simply slide the bezel off the front of the drive and your drive is ready to install into the carrier. Take your new drive and slide it forward into place so that these two holes go over these two pins along the front edge of the carrier and these three circular tabs sit on the top of the drive. You can now reattach the four Torx T10 screws that hold the drive to the carrier. Set the temperature sensor roughly into the same place as it was on the original drive and use the retainer and foam pad to hold it in place. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow them all to stick. Finally, replace the small EM pad and the drive assembly is now ready to install. Line up the SATA connector on the drive with the cable on the iMac and slide the two pieces together. Then, set the drive so that it sits flat in the bay and replace the two Torx T10 screws that hold it in. Once you have the drive secured, you can fold the cloth tape back over into place and replace and secure the temperature sensor cable. You can now set the LCD back into the iMac case. Reattach the inverter cable and reseal the tape over it. Then, lower the display some until you can reattach the temperature sensor cable. You can now lay the LCD flat and secure it into place with the eight Torx T8 screws. Finally, carefully push the LVDS connector back into its socket and secure it with its two Torx T6 screws. We can now replace the front bezel. First, reattach the microphone cable and rewrap the tape around it to help keep it secure. You can then hook the bottom of the bezel over the bottom of the iMac, but don't set the top back down yet. To make sure you don't pinch the microphone cable, run it through the hole in the frame. Then set the bezel flat into place. Use a small screwdriver or nylon tool to position the camera properly using the holes on either side. Once you've done that, you can push the microphone cable into the open area underneath the hole you ran it through earlier. You can now replace the 12 screws that hold the bezel in. The two longest screws go in the two bottom center holes. The four middle size screws go in the two lower corner holes and along the right edge.
The six smallest screws go in the remaining holes. You can now set the iMac upright and replace the front glass. Align the pins on the glass to the holes in the iMac and slide everything into place. You can now remove the suction cups and clean any fingerprints off the front glass. Finally, replace the memory cover on the bottom and tighten the single Phillips screw to hold it in place. You may now hook your iMac back up, plug it in, and turn it on.